It's the first time I'd ever heard of a chief design officer. It's not necessarily a common thing to do. Alder, I want to start with you. What does this really mean? Does this increase Johnny's power? Does it change his level of influence? I think it's just a titular recognition of stuff he's been doing already. Um, essentially, he's been the chief design officer for, for Apple. In some ways, it's a role he took over after Steve Jobs stepped back and pulled him in as a, as a partner over time. Um, and now, in some ways, just like Steve needed somebody to help him cover see the entire portfolio of Apple products, uh, Johnny now needs these two lieutenants are going to help him deal with all the different products that Apple makes. Kobe, what do you think? I mean, I, I, on one hand, you think, oh gosh, Ives not going to be there for the day to day, the nitty gritty, and doesn't he need to be? Is that a loss? Uh, in some ways, probably. He's, uh, I think, an incredible influence there, but at the same time, the company needs influence across all of their different investments, including the office building. So I think they need someone look, seeing things more globally. Alex? Well, Emily, I think investors should be paying attention to a move like this because, yes, his influence is going up by de fact that the company is getting so much larger. You think about the influence of Apple on the world. Whether he got this new role or not, his influence is going up dramatically. And what we suspect at JMP Securities is that this is a stepping stone towards Apple coming out with a whole array of new Internet of Things type of products. He'll have the oversight to make sure those all harmonize with each other. Perhaps the most important one and the one we're looking forward to most is the Apple car. Okay. Tell us about the Apple car. What are, you, what are you expecting? Well, it's very clear that Apple is hiring very seriously in this space. And you think about what Google is doing, what Tesla is doing, what all the major automobile manufacturers are doing. We're heading towards an autonomous driving world. They already have Maps. They have Siri to have intelligent cloud with it. And they have the greatest industrial design mind in the world in Johnny Ives. You put that all together with their low-cost manufacturing and you've got a revolution in the making. So we think that's coming. We think it's a big deal. We think it's potentially a trillion dollar opportunity for Apple by 2020. And so again, investors should be paying attention to this. I think it's more about, uh, well, I, I'm not sure I agree about the autonomous car being the focus, but I definitely agree about this being an opportunity for Apple. Uh, if you look at car user interface these days, it's pretty miserable. And I think everyone at Apple is looking at, at that and saying we could do a much better job, certainly regulatory issues that, that limit the, uh, the design speed with which you can operate in automotive. But I think Johnny's looking at that saying we can make a big impact. Now, Tim Cook made it clear in his memo that I still has control of design. And yet, on the other hand, there are people saying, is this a step Johnny I was taking towards leaving the company. You know, we've heard him talk about being exhausted. I saw him speak at the Vanity Fair New Establishment Summit last year, and he talked about all of the time he's missed with his family. Take a listen to this quote. He's actually talking about Xiaomi, a company that's been criticized of stealing Apple design or copying Apple design. Here was his response to that question. You spend seven or eight years working on something, um, and then it's copied. I have to be honest, the first thing I think isn't, oh, that was flattering. <laughs> um, <laughs> all those weekends I could have had at home with my lovely family, but didn't. I loved that moment and I, I remembered it because you just got a sense of how much he cares about the stuff that, that he's producing. If he's not as involved on a day-to-day -day basis, again, I, I sort of go back to my question, how much of a loss, Alder, do you think that is? It's not any more of a loss than Steve having to run two companies at the same time and still having his fingers in all the different projects that Apple was involved in. In some ways, Johnny is stepping up to play that role at Apple. And frankly, in a company that big with that many products and that many design teams running at the same time, you need management. Designers need structure in which to work and do their creative best work. And this is going to give him that. Richard Howarth and Alan Dye, these are the two people that are going to be filling his shoes. One hardware, one focused on software. Do you, do you know these guys? Who are they? Their names have started to pop up more and more recently as Apple has started to announce things. Uh, Richard in the context of the Apple Watch and then more and more in the releases of the new iOS and, and uh, OS X operating systems. You've seen Alan's name mentioned a couple times. Mm -hmm. Clearly, I think Apple has been bringing them a little bit more to the forefront with the anticipation of this announcement and we'll see them play larger roles in the future. Expect both of them on the stage and, and at WWDC. The good news is for Apple as an organization, new individuals, fresh ideas, getting a chance now to make their impact. And if you're 
right, and Johnny is a bit fatigued. Think about this now in this new role that gives him a potentially greater potential to influence the world yet again. Again, I keep coming back to the car because that's such an enormous opportunity for Apple. But after you know, revolutionizing the smartphone, reinventing the PC, now with the Apple Watch, this just gives him another chance, I would say, to be invigorated. Kobe, from a design perspective, how easy is it to sort of hand the reins, such important reins, to someone else, to oh, other people? Uh, it is incredibly challenging as a designer. I think naturally Johnny represents designers in that he's incredibly passionate about what he does and doesn't want to give up the control because giving up control means uh, potentially giving up a, a direction that he would want it to follow. But at the same time, it's kind of necessary. It's critical that that happens, and I agree with these guys. Uh, in order for, for Apple to operate across all the different things they want to do, he needs a, a larger role where he's touching everything. It seems like Johnny Ive's signature has been to focus on simplicity to the extreme. Alder, do you think that will change? Oh, not at all. No, I mean, as, as, as you put it, he's just going to look for more projects with which to do that. Do you yeah. think others can carry that on, carry on that legacy? Sure, he's built, a, he's built a whole design language and a design system that clearly all of these people, both Alan and Richard, have been instrumental in helping him build and will carry on throughout the, and the organization. And this could prove to be one of the enduring great strengths of Apple. If you go back to what Steve Jobs was so good at, he had clarity of thought. He got people on the same page. And if Johnny Ives can keep that legacy alive with beautifully simplistic design, at the very top, that's a wonderful asset that Apple will have that no other player in electronics really can match.